Alright guys, what's up fam? This video is called The Shady Business of Music Leaks, so let's just check it out. It is now 2023. Why? As I know a little bit about music leaks, not much, not much. Here we still sing so many leaked songs. Piracy and music has- I know, right, what's going on here bro? Hackers or something, right guys? It's been around for years and leaked- Honestly, I don't go out and like look for, uh, these songs or anything, but songs are nothing. I did see on TikTok about like Uzi finding like his leaker or something, and he, he was he was not happy. He was not happy. New. But despite increased efforts from artists, producers, and engineers, today leaks are basically impossible to avoid. What? I was held for ransom <laughs> with my project. They wanted me to pay them a million dollars because they had all my records, every single last one, Who? all the features. Who? Some hackers. The leaked me. Dang, bro. Music industry is no joke. Juice World fans alone have now spent over six hundred thousand dollars buying his leaks through group buys on Discord, with some going for as much as twenty k for one song. There are a few different ways that music can leak, all of which we will see in this video. Dang, bro! I didn't know he still had uh, some unreleased stuff. I think he does. These hackers then sell the leaked songs to fans for often very large amounts of money. While on one hand this means more music for fans to listen to, at the same time it is an artist's worst nightmare when their songs leak. However, the facts, bro, facts. The truth is, nobody wants to have their song leak. Is it's not going to stop anytime soon. What? I feel like we're all guilty of listening to leaked songs at one point or another. Hey, if I listened to one, I did not know it was leaked, guys, but... Man, if you, uh, like, listen to leaked songs on stream, you can get, like, copyright claimed or s and stuff, is what I heard. A, quote, leaked song can be anything from a full CD-quality version of an unreleased track, or it could also... Nowadays, you know, they, they, they make the song, they drop a snippet, and then the hackers go to work. Because, you know, you're, you're just letting everyone know that you have a unreleased song. <laughs> that kind of sucks, man. So just be a short, rough demo from a recording session. As a fan, it is hard not to listen to a leak from your favorite artist, especially when it's someone. Yeah, I'm not that big of back, that big into music, guys. One like Playboy Cardi, who if it releases on YouTube, I'll check it out. Though who only drops music every few years. Dang, for real? <laughs> But again, leaks can have a very negative effect on artists and their- Every time something leak, you know, everything takes longer, so have fun. Uh-oh. ...their management, which we'll get into in more detail in a second. Specifically, when you're someone like Young Nudie who had 172 of his songs leak last December. Like, he got nuked of what could have been at least 10 albums in a single day. Or- Dang, bro, for reals? Or when you're someone like Trippy Red, who is just one of the many artists who have seen their project leaked in its entirety. And this has been a big thing, like, they have been hacking and leaking, like, crazy. Like, at least my last two, three albums, they, <sighs> I don't know how they do it. So, let's start there. How do they do it? Yeah, we, we g genuinely need to know, guys. How are these artists getting hacked and stuff, man? The entire process of leaking music is no simple task, although one that can be extremely rewarding. Here in 2023, one of the biggest ways music is leaked is through a technique known as sim swaps. The process works like this. The hacker first begins by gathering as much personal information about you as possible. Dang, just like a private investigator or something, man. Whether from social media pages or by purchasing. Are those all different apps? I think they are, dude. Not all of them, but well. <laughs> you could probably find a bunch of uh, different apps uh, that are actually different, so it could be a different image every time. ...it via the dark web. Doing so allows them to learn things like your birthday or mother's maiden name, for example. Dude, that's why I'm scared of putting my stuff out there, man. Example, which are... I don't want to get hacked. ...common security questions they might be asked. I, I had my RuneScape ha account hacked already, guys. The scammers will then call your phone's mobile carrier and pretend to be you, claiming you either lost your phone's SIM card or damaged it and need a new one. A SIM card is a tiny portable memory chip... Uh-oh, uh-oh. 
What's up, little Tim? That must be inserted into a smartphone for it to work. They contain loads of information and are what allow you to call and text. So then, using some very persuasive skills, hackers are able to convince the customer service rep to activate a new SIM card, which is one owned by the hackers. No! Dog, just call a carrier saying you're a person you're not. One Reddit user says, Sounds stupidly simple, but it works. The bottom line is that if I can convince the customer service rep on the phone that I am you, they'll switch the phone number over to my phone. Or maybe I pay an insider to make the switch. Oh, that's why Elon Musk uh, removed uh, phone number verification, guys. Is that why? Did, I, did somebody swap my phone number, man? Dang. For me, the weakest link in this whole chain is the that's sad. That's sad, bro. The customer service rep, and since they're usually not highly trained, so I'll, I'll lose my phone number, nor well paid. You know how much of a hassle that is for me? They're an easy target. So then, once the worker activates the new SIM card in possession of the scammers, they are now in control of your entire phone. Two-factor verification forces most accounts to send a text message to your phone number. Thankfully, Google kind of fixed this. They, they also add, like, uh, email verification. ...which you must enter to gain access. Hello, little Tim. The problem is, they send that code to the phone now owned by the scammer. Thus... What? No! They are then able to log into your accounts and access all of your files. Back in 2019, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey was victim in one of the most high-profile SIM swap cases we've ever seen. As they actually got the CEO, guys? No, man. Hackers then went on a string of bizarre posts to his account for the 20 minutes they had it, such as... Taking my head, man. My favorite, James Charles got some nice booty. Hey, my... Might be true, it might be true. Who doesn't agree? Now, scammers do hit some pretty massive licks using SIM swaps. However, if you think about it, leaking music is a lot less risky than directly stealing money from someone. Just a facts, bro, facts. A few weeks ago in January. I don't get into any of this stuff, man. We just post YouTube videos, that's it. January, one of Lil Uzi Vert's best friends, Rock, was sim swapped. Don't call or text none of my phones. Dudes hacked my phone, iCloud, and Instagram on some sim swaps. This led to hundreds of unreleased tracks that were saved in his phone now hitting the internet in the hands of leakers. And I know that they're anxious about getting the songs. Dang, bro. They got Uzi as well, bro. Sad. Shaking my head, shaking my head. But at the same time, it's in a development stage. It's like, we don't go out like and say, hey, I want to build, yeah, build a house. And then tomorrow, the whole thing's up. However, while SIM swaps are a huge problem and one of the biggest techniques, these leaks are happening from SIM swaps. People are paying employees who work at phone stores to log into your account and switch service from your SIM card to another phone to access iCloud, Instagram. Password reset and call your carrier provider and put extra security on your account. Techniques leakers use it is not the bro. I hope I don't get targeted like this, man. That would suck. Nobody wants to get targeted like freaking lose all your accounts. You know how much a pain it is to get your accounts back. Only way that unreleased music gets out. Many scammers are also able to hack emails of artists, producers, and engineers, gaining access to online shared project files. You get a lot of music through hacking emails. One 17-year-old leaker told Vice, you get into the email account, filter through emails that have attachments, and then you'll find songs because they all send songs via email. Dang, bro, it's hard to send it without email, man. You gotta bring it on a thumb drive and stuff. Sometimes people also export Shaking my head, shaking my head. Thank you for the follow, man. Thank you for the follow. But recording sessions from studios the songs were made in, sometimes we see people in an artist camp sell them off for a quick bag, or more rarely you'll even see producers and engineers sell the songs themselves. What? They're going behind the artist's back here, guys. Sad, sad. As if they know the track will never release. I used to leak the Migos music. Did you really? On purpose? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait a minute. I would like take songs off their computer. If they weren't going to use the song, I would just drop it on my SoundCloud and the blogs would pick it up. And then you have cases like the recent Michael Jackson situation, where his long- Wait, recent? Longtime engineer Brad Sunberg had his hard drive and computer stolen, which contained previously unreleased Michael Jackson music. We turned our backs for a few seconds and uh, 
and the computer and the hard drive, not only were they gone, but it seems as though this individual actually climbed out of a window and ran across the roof and broke a skylight. And uh, the whole thing is just very unfortunate. Dang, bro, for reals? I didn't even know he had unreleased stuff. So the leakers have the unreleased songs. No. Now, how do they sell them? The most common way leaks are sold is through group buys on Discord. A leaker will post a song with a set price, which is at least usually a couple thousand dollars depending on the artist and song, and then fans will all chip in until that price is reached. They raise the money, and the leaker sends them the track, giving listeners that feeling of exclusivity $1,000 for a song, guys? Would you pay that much? By being one of the select- Dang, bro, that's way too much. Select people in the world who have that- Sheesh, guys. That song, despite paying huge prices with the chance the track could still release someday. Eventually, though, the roles reverse, and one of the buyers will then decide they want to sell the track off for some easy cash. Thus, the cycle repeats and the song keeps spreading. They work hand in hand together. So you buy it and then you just sell it again. Well, to make selling unreleased music extremely easy. Juice World fans are often the ones you'll see paying the highest prices for his songs. I guess it does make a little more sense since Juice is unfortunately no longer with us, and given that a lot of I know, right? I wonder, I wonder if it's out there. I wonder if it's unreleased stuff. 50 gigabytes. That's quite a bit of uh, unreleased stuff from Michael Jackson. Not gonna lie, I didn't even know he had unreleased stuff. The fans are not happy with how Lil Bibby in Grade A have handled his posthumous music. 15k for rental? DJ Scheme tweeted after one of Juice's songs sold. Y'all trippin', it's a shame the way some people treat his music. Trust me, we don't want that, but Bibby won't give a sh**, so we have to go this way. We been told Bibby to drop it, that's his fault. Fans replied, no party this year, F the hackers. However, leaks affect the rollouts of all artists' albums when they happen, whether they're posthumous or not. I kind of was like, if I don't drop it now, then it's going to be out there and they're going to hear it regardless, and they're going to hear the bad mix regardless. So. Trippy Red's new album, Mansion Music, leaked weeks before it released, forcing Trippy to rush the album out, something we see happen very frequently with artists. Lil Yachty is a... Dang, bro. You know, I, I occasionally do see them, uh, like, leak it on YouTube back in the day. Do I like trains? Sure. Another recent example. This then messes up the rollouts and promotion labels plan for these releases. Artists can either choose to rush the project out like Trippy did, wait until the originally scheduled release date and miss out on streaming numbers and sales profit, or... Yeah, they be leaking it on YouTube sometimes, bro, but... Uh, sometimes, sometimes they uh, contact their copyright and uh, prevent the songs from going up before they actually get put on YouTube, which is a good way to get your you know, the songs uh, unable to be heard by the everybody. You know what I mean? Just scrap the music completely and move on. You gotta feel bad for artists when this happens. While sometimes it is their own fault since rappers aren't exactly the most organized humans, an album they had been working on for months releases without their control and they don't make a single penny off of it. Especially someone like Kid Cudi, who saw his latest album Intergalactic leak with legit fart sounds added all throughout. Such an angel. What the heck? Did he do it to deter the copyrights or something? <laughs> something, man, what the heck's going on? I doubt that's how Cuddy wanted fans to hear his new album on first listen. However, while it is easy to see how leaks negatively affect our favorite artists, I suppose there are a few positives that can come out of them. In a way, leaked songs kind of serve as a test run for the fans, giving artists an idea if their audience fucks with a song or not. For example, back in 2019 when Lil Mosey's track Blueberry Fago unofficially hit the internet, the leak quickly went viral thanks in large part to TikTok. Mosey then saw this reaction and decided to actually release the song, which soon became the biggest hit of his career although he would have never dropped it if it hadn't leaked. I mean, I'm not sure how it got leaked, but at first I was like, kind of my shit up. But then once it started blowing up and it was trending, I was like, all right, well, I mean, it's kind of a blessing because I wouldn't have known. Dang, bro. 
That's wild. That is wild. Kid Leroy's nine-time platinum track Stay was another super viral leak, which helped land Justin Bieber as a feature after seeing all of the hype. Fans refer to their favorite leaks and snippets as quote grails. Since artists already know their fans love these songs, we often see guys like Lil Uzi Vert. <laughs> grails, never heard that term before in like music. Or including these grails on deluxe projects or on EPs such as his recent Red and White. When you think about it, the biggest thing leak songs affect is streaming numbers for artists. Since if fans listen to True man. DJ Academics always be posting uh how how much artists uh do on their when they release some music. Or at least he used to. I guess he still does. This one's was posted earlier this year, so... Leaks that obviously doesn't count, nor are fans likely to play the song as much when it does actually release. But while numbers do play a big role in today's industry and do help land other big opportunities, mm. streaming has always been one of the lowest sources of revenue for artists. They make the majority of their money from tours and merch, but... Oh, snap. What about, like, YouTube revenue, guys? They make a lot of money from that? again at the same time nobody likes when their work is released without their consent you know it's unfortunate that that shit happens but it happens and you just got to prevent it from happening even if that means carrying a hard drive especially if you're a big artist people they are smiling in your face as soon as you leave <laughs> sell all your shit. Despite artists and producers increased efforts through steps like no longer using file sharing platforms like Dropbox, exporting session files immediately after recording, and requiring unfamiliar engineers and friends to delete their copies of the songs, it is still practically impossible to Gotta like put cameras in the room so nobody sneaks on your computer or something, man. Prevent leaks. Today you can find leaked songs on literally every streaming platform. Using sites like DistroKid, people are easily able to upload unreleased songs under different artists' names. Like Lil Cambo, for example, whose upload of the iconic 2019 Playboy Cardi leak Pissy Pamper would actually reach the number one spot on Spotify. Which is insane. What the heck? Insane. Before the song came out, there was a snippet on Oh yeah, it does for sure, man. YouTube, and it sounded like it would be a hit if it was released. A couple weeks later, the song got leaked, and I posted it to my channel, not thinking about how big it would get. This is another way leakers profit off of these songs. As one leaker told Pitchfork they were paid over 60k a year from uploading leaks to DistroKid. But having- Dude, That's a full-time job, basically, not gonna lie. Having them taken down is also very difficult for artists and labels. All of the major records record labels have legal teams and departments basically dedicated to removing illegally shared music. But in today's day, with the amount of leaks facts, bro, facts, and people constantly posting them, it's hard to keep up and catch them all. The good news, at least when it comes to SIM swaps though, Apple's new iPhone 14 is the first iPhone to be sold exclusively with eSIM. eSIM is instead a digital SIM card that allows you to activate a cellular plan without having to use a physical SIM. However, if I know anything about the internet and about scammers and hackers, I don't know, it doesn't seem 100% foolproof, right guys? Hackers, they will always find new techniques to work around it. With entire sad, sad. dedicated forums like leak.cx, multiple different subreddits, and overall a subreddits as well? Come on, reddits? They're allowing that stuff to roll through. Rapidly growing community that fiends for unreleased songs, leaks will continue to be a big problem in the music industry. Leaked music is by no means legal, nor is it morally right. We claim we are fans, but then essentially go and steal from the artists we love. Yeah, but I mean, it's just music. The 17-year-old leaker says, We are all going to die one day, we might as well have beautiful music. If you want to hear more on this crazy industry, I'd also recommend checking out Maddie Ball's Fire- Dang, bro. It hurts the artists though, man. Videos. <sighs> you are the only one here, man. He did on it. Thank you for joining, bro. Too. I, I was on, I was a YouTube streamer, but I got banned. Music leaks are not going away. Thank you for the follow, brother. Any time in the near future. But I guess if you are going to listen to unreleased music, that's which I don't. It's cool, you know. Is that a stack of like fake money right there? It is. Oh, if you like it, go I gotta get like a fake money for a TikTok or something. Go ahead. But all I'll say is. Uh, but yeah, that was the video guys. Check this creator out in the description. I'll see you guys next video. Uh, later guys. Peace out everyone. Thank you for watching. Later.
You guys are the best. You guys are the best. Check out 1111. That's a YouTube channel name. Seems to be a well done channel.